Welcome back to the channel, everyone. BLN 437, and it's been a while. I had to take care of some personal stuff, but I am back. We're going to talk about the Evan Longoria trade in just a second. I also am going to mention that I am going to talk about the Dodgers trade that happened on Saturday and why it's going to make the 2018 offseason one of the greatest offseasons of all time. Like I said, that will be in a separate video where I discuss that trade, and I'm going to discuss why it makes 2018 the greatest offseason of all time. So let's get in with Evan Longoria. Evan Longoria got traded to the San Francisco Giants. And this is just my reaction. Obviously, this deal happened yesterday. You guys already know. And for some of you guys who don't know, Evan Longoria has been traded to the San Francisco Giants. He got traded to the Giants for Christian Arroyo, which is their top prospect that everybody seemed to have wanted in the Giancarlo Stanton deal. And apparently, if they were in on Machado, they were going to want Christian Arroyo. I was looking for his scouting report all day yesterday, and I finally found a decent hitter. Well, not decent. He's a, he's, an, he's a plus average hitter. He's going to be somewhat of an elite hitter, they believe. Not power-wise, but he's going to be a really, really good hitter. Can run a bit, can field excellent, has a good arm, has pretty much all the tools other than power, which is good. You know, the power as, you, as it ages can obviously be developed. Now, they gave up him and they gave up Span, which Tampa Bay Rays are eating up a contract, obviously, with Denard Span. It's a good move. It's a good move for the San Francisco Giants in that the Giants needed some type of offensive production. Evan Longoria gives them that type of production. It's Evan Longoria, the same Evan Longoria from five to six years ago, which is what everybody keeps mentioning in this trade. Listen, Evan Longoria doesn't have to be Evan Longoria five to six years ago. Evan Longoria is not going to hit 30 home runs in that ballpark anyways. If he hits you 20 to 25 bombs and gets you about 30 to 40 doubles, that's a successful season in my eyes. And Evan Longoria is going to give you that and more. Good defender, plays every day. The Giants couldn't go wrong with this trade. It was that or Moustakis, and I feel that his swing fits better in AT&T ballpark more so, more so than Moustakis' swing. And like I said, it's just an overall great deal for them. Now, the Giants can add another offensive weapon here, whether it's Jay Bruce, who they've been linked to, or a Lorenzo Cain, which is they've been linked to as well. Remains to be seen that they do have to give up a draft pick if they sign Kane for how long he's been there. So I believe that they're just, just going to stick with Bruce and then stick it out with whatever they have in the outfield, which isn't bad at all. Now, does, does this move finally get the Giants to contend? Listen, the Giants should be contending regardless of whether this move happened or not. You still have Johnny Cueto, you still have Madison Bumgarner, and you still have Mark Melanton. And that team last year was injury prone they lost you know 90 something games not because they weren't talented enough not because they weren't good enough but because they just weren't healthy if you get a healthy Johnny Cueto with a healthy Madison Bumgarner and a healthy Mark Melanton along with now an Evan Longoria on your team with Brandon Crawford Brandon Belt who needs to have a bounce back season even though he was injured a bit there too this team is dangerous, and this team can do some stuff in the West. Are they going to win the National League West, in my opinion? No, I think that that still goes to the Dodgers, who I'm still waiting for them to make a move. They have made a move, like I said, on Saturday to at least get rid of some payroll, but that's really more for next year, more so this year. They can add a piece this year, but it was meant for the next couple of years. Listen, this there's no reason why this, uh, this Giants team can't win a wild card spot. In my opinion, they can win a second or first wild card spot with the team that they have right now, especially with a healthy, like I said, with a healthy rotation, a healthy pen, and Melanson and offense. Yeah, they can. Now, the thing is, is that does this trade, does this trade help them in the long run? Obviously, no, it doesn't help them in the long run. Evan Longoria is 32 years old. He's obviously going to get older. The production eventually will slow down from Evan Longoria. But right now, if we're talking about right now, it's a good move. If it's a, it's a good move. For the next two to three years. Maybe even four. It's a good move. So I'm not going to hate on the move. I think it's a good move there. I think they needed to make this move. Obviously Tampa Bay wasn't going to be able to keep him for much longer. Especially now that he, you know, they want to rebuild. And they're going to start tearing down here. And they had to trade him before April. Because if not he would have been a 10-5 guy. Where he could have vetoed certain teams that he didn't want to play for. And you don't want that type of situation. We saw what happened with John Carlos Stanton. And how he called their bluff. When the Marlins were saying either you're going to accept the trade to the Giants or the Cardinals or you're going to stay here. And he, he made sure that he still got to the place he wanted to go to. So, overall, good deal. If they can get maybe another bat in Jay Bruce, maybe another bullpen piece there. They don't need to go after a Wade Davis or a Greg Holland, like I've said, for like the Angels and other teams. They just need like another decent bullpen piece, whatever that bullpen piece is. Whether it's Manson, even though I believe Manson is still signed with the Nationals. But they just need somebody like that, that type of caliber. So, overall, good deal. 
And let's just get on to the next little bit here, which is Yonder Alonso signed a two-year deal with the Cleveland Indians. Obviously, this is the replacement for Carlos Santana. Decent replacement. Not he's not a Carlos Santana. He's not gonna. I don't think he he's worthy of saying of saying that. You know, he's if he can repeat what he did the last season, then maybe I'll sit here and say that it's a good move. It's it's a good replacement for Carlos Santana. But until Yonder Alonso puts up good seasons or good consecutive seasons back to back, like he did last season, and he fell off in the second half last season. A lot of people don't you know, don't really remember that because of how good his numbers look when you look at his numbers, but he had a really rough second half. But if he can if he can repeat that and have a better second half than he did last season, by all means this is a good move by the Cleveland Indians. He's cheaper than Carlos Santana, possibly cheaper than a Jay Bruce because it doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to sign Jay Bruce back. So overall it's a decent move. If he can do what he can do and he can have a better second half, absolutely great move by the Cleveland Indians and Yonder Alonso's gonna do some damage for the Cleveland Indians. So anyways, guys, that's it for me. I'm going to end this video right here. I don't want to go too long. I'm at six minutes, which is solid. I'm going to be covering the offseason like I've been doing. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's been watching the videos. And if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Comment as well. Do you guys like these moves by the San Francisco Giants and the Cleveland Indians signing Yonder Alonso? And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys for more MLB offseason topic videos later on, guys.